All right, we are live in Mozambique from the storage room again. Prayer room. Howdy, howdy, all. Hope you guys are doing well. All right, my mom and dad are online. Hope you guys are doing well in Tennessee. Love you guys. We are doing well here. I'm excited to be online again with you guys. Psalm 43 is going to be epic. I mean, uh, Genesis 43. All right. Well, we're going to we're going to give it just like 30 seconds and then whoever we're right on time, whoever gets online on time is going to get the song. It's only 48 hours, not even 40. It's like 12 hours old. I just started writing this maybe a day and a half ago. And then my mom texted me, which would have been my morning, your night, last night. And I had just, my journal was on my lap, and I had just finished writing the second verse. So we will we'll introduce that here in just a minute. I think it's very fitting for what we're going over in Bible studies and things. The camera working well, the audio, can you guys hear all right? Quay Jordan, hey man. You're still getting after life, I see, man. Ever since the Primerica days, I've been following you. It looks like you have a passion for weight training and lifting as much as I do out here. All right. Well, let's let's introduce this new song and see who ends up getting online. But if if uh, the audio or something's not working, just let me know. That's going to be important over the next few minutes as we get started, because I'm probably not going to be thinking about it very much unless you guys comment. I know for Arizona, this is an hour earlier than normal. All right. Camera's working. Can you please speak a bit louder? There we go. So, thank you, Mom. So, the volume on my camera's up all the way. All right. So, this new song is called um, The Silence and the Sound. Or, Dad, you can help me with this. Or, it's going to be called These Words. I haven't figured out what title I want yet. Um, the story behind it is um, I've been challenged lately with realizing that I'm writing and I've done the things that I've done for years, but wanting to press into writing a little bit deeper and being a little bit more vulnerable and, uh, and really challenging myself with what I'm writing. Um, you know, Ernest Hemingway, when he, I heard a quote, that he said when he wrote, he always every day tried to write the truest sentence about life, the truest sentence that he knew at that moment. If you want to try that, it's really hard. Um, my wife says that she cannot hear me either. So I don't know if maybe the stand I'm using is cutting off the volume. Here, is that better, you guys? Hopefully that's better. This song is kind of about that. I was writing down... Um, just some vulnerable words between me and the Lord. And then as I was doing that, I remembered Psalm 139. And so that's the chorus of this song where I got it from. All right, here it goes. When searching in between silence and the sound my mind's unraveling 
this heart still trembling at words I can't write down these words I can't write down search me oh God for you know my heart you've tried me you know Search me, oh God, have I grieved your heart? And take me back to where we first started. Has my heart grown so hard that you cannot be found? all the pondering my soul still wandering through words that I can't write down these words I can't write down has my heart grown so hard now you cannot be found in all the wandering my heart's still pondering through words I can't write down. These words I can't write down. Search me, oh God. You know my heart. You've tried me and know my every thought. Search me, oh God, if I've grieved your heart, please take me back to where we first started. Search me, oh God, if I've grieved your Please take me back to where we first started. All right, hopefully that was loud enough. That is the secret song, These Words, or The Silence and the Sound. It's been around for about 12 hours or so, that song. Hopefully you liked it. You can make your comments about it later. But I want to get us into Genesis 43. Um, so who wants to summarize where we're at with Joseph? What happened in chapter 42? Um, what are some ways that you were able to be obedient this week to that passage in 42? If you were, did you share it with anybody? All those things. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, it's definitely one of the better songs I've written in my life, or definitely one of the most honest. So where where um, are we at in the life of Joseph? Chapter 42, what happened? What's the summary? Um, I know there was a lot of comments that were made um, that particular this particular last week about that passage. Chapter 42 really moved a lot of us. Um, how did obedience go this week uh, with this chapter? How did sharing go? Just waiting on you guys to tell me. Just summarize from last week. Who remembers what happened? Anybody, anybody, it's probably going to be between Carla and my parents because I don't know that there's a whole lot of other people on here. If you're just tuning in, we're in Genesis chapter 43 now. Genesis chapter 43. Um. 
Oh, sorry, Carla. I don't know why you can't hear. It's um, the volume seems to be working. So, so Genesis chapter forty-three is where we're at. If you're just tuning in, welcome, Duck Faulkner. Praying for you and your eye. In the name of Jesus, we just pray that eyes will be open in Jesus' name. Okay, so my mom summarized for us here. Ken Johnson. Ah, buddy, I'm sorry, man. You missed my song by about a minute and a half. But if you replay this, you'll see it. You'll see it on there or I'll, I'll post it to YouTube soon. It's good to see you, man. Brian Monty, glad you're on here. Um, my parents are summarizing chapter 42 of Genesis. The brothers realized what they had done to Joseph when they faced him. Yeah. One of the questions I wanted to ask last week that we can throw out there too was, do we see or sense from the Holy Spirit that there's repentance in the hearts of the brothers and why? And then my parents also said that Reuben was especially realizing what he had done and was coming to what was coming to pass and was uh, reprimanding the brothers for what had come to pass. And that's right. And so um, the brothers don't know that who Joseph is. Joseph has recognized them. Joseph's dealing with the emotions himself. <clears throat> um, Joseph has them going on a journey to get Benjamin. Uh, he's also kept Simeon over. Um, or maybe he hasn't done that yet, but they're gonna. he's got all of them in the jail for three days. Um, for for a bit, my mom said Joseph was testing them and kept Simi, uh, si yeah, Simeon right before they returned to the father. So yeah, so that's where we're at in the life of Joseph right now. If you're just tuning in, we're in Genesis chapter 43. We're walking out the process of how we make disciple makers out here in the field um, in Africa. But I've done this more because I'm wanting to encourage the West about how they can disciple their own families and we can break through that courage barrier that I think has run dry where a lot of families in the West, I think a lot of them aren't making disciples because we don't even believe we can disciple our own families. And so we're hoping that this, this process of how we study the word and listen and encounter will help us to have the courage to do that with our own friends, our own neighbors, and, and do what God asked us to do to make disciples. And so right where we are at. And so um, that's what we're doing. We're going to read through chapter 43. We're going to wait on the Holy Spirit and the Father as I ask questions. I'm going to wait and let you guys answer from your spirit instead of me teaching on it. And we're going to learn from each other. All right. Uh, my parents also said, we really have to wonder if the brothers are repenting. I, it, yeah, it doesn't say it clearly. I think we be, I believe we see a shift in their heart because they're saying that they're honest and they actually are being honest with Joseph. So there's an there's an interesting change in them there. And they're recognizing what they had done to Joseph. Now, if we remember, we counted the years. It has been it was 13 years from when he was 17 and had his first two dreams to when he was standing in front of Pharaoh. That was 13 years. But the first seven years of famine are also over. The first seven years of plenty are over and the years of famine have begun before he saw his brother. So we've got to be right in the realm of 20 years that they have not seen Joseph and this is still in their heart. So there is a conviction of some kind there. Um, I don't know that I would believe that it's guilt necessarily all the way because Joseph's not there to make them feel like they don't know that he's alive for them to feel guilty. So it almost seems like it's more conviction, but that's up for, for grabs. All right. Um, also, um, I wanted to, to ask if anybody had, was obedient this week to the passage. Did you feel this week? If you're not new, if you're not new, did you feel like you were able to obey the passage in chapter 42 or what you learned from the Father? Were you able to be obedient to that this week? And if so, how? If you're just tuning in, please type in your responses. This is an interactive Bible study. This is not about Ian teaching. 
This is about Ian helping encourage others to be able to make disciples. And it starts with our own families. Joel Marsden. Awesome. Glad you're on here, man. I'll never forget that coffee encounter at Elevate Coffee, bro. It's so good. All right, well, since I'm not getting a lot of responses back on that, let's go ahead and jump into Genesis 43. And if you have those responses, type them in, and I'll just pause this as we're reading, or we'll get to them after. But make sure that as we ask the questions, you guys respond, because this is about you guys teaching each other um, by hearing from the Holy Spirit versus me trying to teach what I think the Scripture is saying. All right? Genesis 43. Let's start. Oh, my mom and dad did have a comment before we start. My, my mom says that for her, she's spending definitely more time with the Father in prayer and study. And dad has been very regular nightly in his study as obedience. And so, so good to see you, Joel. So glad you're on here, man. Um, and so, yeah, I would agree. I think spending the time with the Father for you, if that that's the obedience that's needed for us to have the courage to go out and, and share. All right, Genesis chapter 43. Let's begin reading. Now the famine was severe in the land. And when they had eaten the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again. Buy us a little food. Now, I want to pause for a second just so that you guys can hear this because it says, when they had eaten, I live in a culture of Mozambique where I understand this. So the grain was probably in a sack and the sack probably weighed about, if I'm, if, if I'm, if it's anywhere similar to here, it probably weighed about 50 kilos, which is, I'm sorry, 25 kilos, which is about 50 pounds. So you have a sack of grain, one sack, that's probably 50 to 75 pounds, all right? They had enough grain for them all to eat. So some time has passed. Sometimes those sacks of grains, like Baba Asan, who you know, our, gar our guard here, our gardener here, he has a family of three kids and a wife. And they go through only about two to three sacks a month. But they take two to three sacks a month to do Ugali with their grain or with their corn. So I'm wondering how much time passed by and if Simeon's going, when are they coming back? You know, anyways. But Judah said to his father, the man solemnly warned us, saying, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, who's also Jacob, if you guys remember his name, was replaced by the Lord. Israel said, why did you treat me so badly as to tell the man that you had another brother? So basically Jacob's saying, why didn't you lie? They replied, the man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? What we told him was in answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you. And also our little ones. I will be a pledge to his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. There it is. He does have some time. Yes, that's good, Mom and Dad. Jacob is taking their behavior as specific against him personally. It's very interesting how, he's, how they're doing that. And he, they were honest with the Pharaoh. <laughs> then their father, in verse 11, Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry a present down to the man. A little balm, a little honey, gum, 
myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you. Carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Verse 13. Take also your brother and arise. Go again to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may he send back you or your other brother and Benjamin. And as for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. Verse 15. So the men took this present, and they took double the money with them. And Benjamin, they arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make ready for the men. Make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him and brought the men to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house. And they said, It is because of the money which we replaced in our sacks the first time that we are brought in so that he may assault us and fall upon us to make us servants and seize our donkeys. Verse 19. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the door of the house and said, O my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food. And when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and there was each man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. So we have brought it again with us. Verse 22. And we have brought other money down with us to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. He replied, Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has put treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. And when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house and given them water and they had washed their feet, And when he had given their donkeys fodder, they prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. Verse 26. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present that they had with them and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. Verse 29. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. Verse 30. Then Joseph hurried out, for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and controlling himself, he said, Serve the food. Verse 32, They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. The portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. Oh, looks like we won't be able to hear about 44 until Wednesday. All right. Amen. My mom says it hit her that they had money but no food available. Interesting. Also, my dad and I both thought it interesting that the steward must have had a trusting relationship with Joseph, that he felt he was able to tell the brothers he had put the money in the sacks. Absolutely. Um, We don't know about that, but yeah, it definitely speaks to some of the questions we've asked about how how God is affecting others around us. And so let's, let's start with that question, actually. Let's start with the humanity question. In this passage, what do you sense in your, from Holy Spirit or what do you hear the Father telling you about His relationship between Himself and humanity? What do we hear individually from the Holy Spirit about the Father's relationship between Himself and humanity in this passage of Scripture? And we're in Genesis 43 for anyone who just came online. Genesis 43.
Anybody, anybody? Hold on one second. Sai. Como le cachica mucho su ne, ahí se, caribu. Un lenguete chusio. Sorry guys, I'm going to for just a minute to prove my point about the sacks of grain. Caribu, Bob. Yeah, Okay, so there's a cultural lesson. Asani was right outside my door helping me dig some holes. And uh, he ran to the water faucet to wash up before he comes in here and answers these questions. So um, that's not a Muslim thing. That is a cultural thing based on the chapter we just read, actually. So... Sit tight just for a second, because I'm going to have Asani answer a question for us. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is Baba Asan. He's my friend. Baba Asan, I am Yeah. He's also following Jesus now, and um, and so I wanted to, to ask him some questions about this, this grain thing, just to get you guys an idea. Um, so I'm going to speak Chia for a bit. So, Uwe to Kulanga, Bible, Genesis 43. Eh? Yeah. So, Kultura Acho, Shemos Mos Ap, Mashamba, Kulima, Yimanga, Isakus, yeah. Ugali, Nigongo, mm -hmm. Jeman Jaji, Inkati, Egyptu, Chilambu, Egyptu. Okay. Yeah. So, Africa, number E, North. Yeah. Okay. So, Alon li wasa li ao, et? Akuya yugali, masiku gosi pa 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 mwesi, et? Yeah. So I said, each month his family eats yugali, which is the cornmeal. Nabo li wasa li ao, akusaka saku silingwa, paka mwesi wan. Yeah, okay. Five. Five. Yeah. Oh. Eh. Ugali Sampano. Okay. Yeah. So when a liwasa ya three wa watatu, maybe three? Yeah. Okay. So I was wrong. It's not two to three sacks, it's actually five sacks that he goes through a month. Saku Saku Jumu. Um Vinti kilos, eh? Yeah, Vinti. So one explica manjao. So manjao ligo mo one guti. Eh, kultura apa shemos mos uwe apa. So one guti kano chisya Joseph la umi jo Joseph. Je manjaji iya ligo mo Paula loja kusuma shemos mos uwe. Edi asante ba. Kaji. Eh, ajen ni umi asante ba. So, five sacks of grain, all right? Now, in these five sacks, it takes him a month to eat those five sacks, right, for his family. So that's why in chapter 43, whatever that verse was, it's, I think it's somewhere before verse 11, it says they ate the grain, which means if there's, there's like eight people in their family or something like that besides, so that doesn't include the wives, that doesn't include... So you're talking, he said we could have returned twice. So Simeon had been sitting there for the better part, I'm betting, the better part of two months. One month to two months. At least three weeks, at least. Because of them, them eating the grain. Like, I can see that now. So I just wanted you guys to have a little cultural lesson. Hey, mama ni baba wangu, akuti, hello. Hello. Okay, he says asante. So my parents... Um, my parents said, where did I leave off here? Uh, God's prophecies are fulfilled. The dream spoke of Joseph being a leader over the brothers, and we are seeing that continually emphasized. 
Very good. That, that, the father's relationship between himself and humanity is the question that we're asking right now. And my parents are seeing that he's fulfilling, God's fulfilling his, his, his word with humanity. God is faithful. His plans are evident if we listen to his word. Amen. My parents also said, uh, it's so wonderful seeing the comparisons between the Bible and the culture there in Mozambique. Thanks. Jory, my best friend, I love you, brother. It's good to see you on here. Sorry about our call the other day, man. It was just good to hear your voice a bit. My parents said, you must be very strong to carry that many pounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, hey, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Hey, hello, Baba Sani, hello, Baba Sani. Hey, wow, wow, I see when it's a Isa Sampano. Why do I jeans? Yeah, yeah, hey, he's, he's happy to hear that. Thank you for saying that, guys. Uh, my parents said, do you think Simeon was in jail the whole time? Yes, I do. Um, does anybody want to comment on that? Anybody that's been in a culture like this? Um, if, if you've ever seen or dealt with culture here, like, it's not far off. When someone gets thrown in prison, unless the judge comes to the jail in a culture like this, you're not getting out. And so, um, who knows? They might have, Joseph might have spared him a bit. It doesn't say anything about it, and that's why I think he was sitting there. Um, if it would have said something, like Joseph felt bad for him or something. But I think there's a part of Joseph as well that we're seeing here that, that he wants to carry out a bit of discipline on his brothers. Not like vengeful, but I think he's wanting to see how integrous they are. I mean, Joseph spent 13 years in jail and he was just fine. So I'm sure he's testing Simeon, but it's up for debate. Anybody else, um, anybody else hear from the Holy Spirit anything about the Father's relationship between himself and humanity in chapter 43? What else are you hearing? For me, for me, one of the things I see is is um, is the father's compassion. Like Joseph's not able to have the compassion well up inside of himself when he sees his brothers, unless it's the father's heart. Um, we're made in the image of God, and so for me personally, the revelation I feel from the Lord on this is that Joseph's compassion after all these years. Um, his heart softening towards seeing his family and those things is only possible by the Father's grace. And that's how he feels towards us. My parents said, he is faithful. When we receive a calling, it may not be fulfilled until years later. It's really good. That's really good. I would actually increase that and say, most of the time. It's not fulfilled until years later. And, you know, when people ask me sometimes, well, why is that? Why, you know, God sees us. This is just me speaking out of my heart. God sees us as we will be. So, we see, the Bible says, we see dimly in a mirror. But on that day, we'll see clearly. But Jesus sees you. It says, it says, let's look to, to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith in Hebrews, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Jesus, you were the joy that was set before him. Jesus sees you already as you are. He doesn't see you as you are presently or how you were. He sees you as you will be, as you are through him, as you are going to be in, your, in the full glory of who he has said you are. And so um, that call many times, I believe, takes many years to be fulfilled because we don't see ourselves that way, which makes us not prepared to walk out the call. There's, there's things in our life, there's identity issues in our life that would cause hurt to other people that he doesn't want to have to judge you for until we are capable of carrying the weight of the responsibility of that call. And so many times we end up chasing our giftings instead of our calling because our gifting 
many times will give us praise and adoration, and it looks like it's a call, but it's really to assist our call. My dad's wondering why Joseph chose Simeon to remain. Yeah, I don't know. I I thought about that a little bit too. I'm not sure on that. Um, I've read a couple times before that, and I don't see it. If anybody else is having revelation on that, please share. Um, you know, Judah and Reuben are kind of, Judah really helps with the type and shadow of Joseph being a Jesus caricature. But Simeon, um, he does speak up at times, but I, he's not, I, I don't see it. I don't see why. So I don't know if maybe in lineage um, of age group, uh, we're, we might be missing something culturally as to why Joseph picked him in age. If I was to ask Asan, Asan has like eight brothers and sisters, and he's one, if not the oldest, one of the oldest. Um, he would probably understand this, why Simeon was picked. I don't, I don't see it. Uh, my parents were thinking when you said Jesus sees us as you will be of the stranger that came up to me at YWAM Tyler and made reference for my heart. Maybe that was a reinforcing that God sees my heart. I believe many, many, many times that someone gives a prophetic word of knowledge or a word of wisdom to you, it's, it is to help solidify our identity card, mom. It's to identify, solidify what his heart is over us so that we'll keep pressing into that call no matter how long. Dad says we might have to look back at the role Simeon played when he was sold. Or maybe, as you say, it could be an age thing. Yeah, usually if it's not referenced in a, in a specific way, it usually doesn't have to do with um, like the plot of what happened, but I could be wrong. Um, and this is a very, very African slash Hebraic cultural thing going on. With lineage because you have the fact that they come from two different moms and so but they all come from Jacob as the the line of Abraham Isaac and Jacob as the father and so there was responsibility there is responsibilities in age um, in this culture here like if there's two brothers that are older than the sister that's having problems the, 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 the sister will default to the next oldest one the Jomba as the person who makes decisions instead of the dad, if the dad's gone type thing. Like, there's that stuff that plays into it here. All right, so another question, all right? What can we, remember last time I said, what can we learn from Jesus as the type and shadow? But this time I'm going to ask this. I want you to, to listen for Holy Spirit and the Father of what we could learn from Joseph in chapter 43, what could we individually, you, I, us, corporately, but what could we learn from Joseph <clears throat> at this point in his life? What could we learn from him individually in this passage for the kingdom? Rudy Rivera, it's good to see you, man. My Trace Dias brother, Chad Thibodeau, man. Hey, your life is rocking, bro. I've been following you, Chad, so... Uh, I love it. I love how you're, you're pulling people into their dreams and their desires and their visions. You remind me so much of Jory in that way. It's good to see you on here, man. So the question, we're in Genesis chapter 43, if you just tuned in. What could we learn? What are you hearing the Holy Spirit tell you of what we could learn from Joseph in chapter 43? It's not one of the core four questions that we've been teaching about making disciples, but for those that are maturing in the Lord. This is one of those questions you could ask to help disciples mature. All right. What can we learn from Joseph individually in our lives walking out the kingdom from Joseph in chapter 43? Oh yeah. And also as you're answering that, dad, one of the reasons that I I forgot this. One of the reasons that I felt the Simeon thing, um, why he was picked, wasn't just like a, like an anger thing or a plot thing, because Judah or Reuben would have been picked probably, but that it's more of an age culture thing uh, based on lineage, is because of what he does with Benjamin. So when they're at the table and Benjamin is honored by the, the five times portion of food, 
the the foundation there is definitely because he is he is a brother from the same mom that is for sure that's almost a matriarchal thing but it's also because Benjamin is innocent age wise he's the youngest and culturally a lot of times the youngest will eat last in this culture all right so um, many times the adults eat first than the kids I know that goes against our Western culture and I don't like it either but and the youngest will, eat, will kind of will scrap last. In this case, he's making a point of that and actually honoring the youth, the youngest person there, and that it's his family member. They don't know that, his own brother, and giving them a, him a bigger portion. In other words, he's flipping the cultural kingdom on its head. So I, the age part, the responsibility of the age part. And so I think normally you would do that portion thing with the oldest and so that's why I think Simeon was put there for some type of a cultural age thing my mom says uh, Joseph is giving the brothers more chances to show their sincerity we can learn to forgive as it would seem Joseph is heading in that direction that's really good mom that's really good I, I think my mom just spoke what could be an individual or a corporate word for sure right there that what could we learn from Joseph in this passage even going into this week. And I think it's that. I think that Joseph is uh, one of those things that he's learning forgiveness by patience. And, and, and while checking their sincerity, he's also pouring his compassion and his love into them without them knowing. Um, what's also amazing is um, I, I'm having a little bit of revelation, too, of what we can learn from Joseph. It's funny. This is fresh bread for me, and I've read this story hundreds of times. It's interesting, now that I'm thinking about it, with the challenges that Joseph has had with moments of, when he was first on, elevating himself almost in an immature way. He's now the highest up. He has nothing to prove to his brothers. But I'm wondering if there is a sense of him um, wanting to be able to love them purely, hiding behind the mask not in a bad way, hiding behind the mask of his pharaohhood by not receiving praise back, like, oh, you're so good to us, like, like them being able to praise him by recognizing them, him getting to do all of that without any recognition from them, like getting to do it with a pure heart just because he loves them without them even knowing or being able to praise him for what he's done. And it would be later that he would actually be able to, um, to show who he was. I think my, what my mom's saying there is tying into that, that he's holding back so as not to receive recognition from man. So as not to receive recognition from those who could give him recognition and to purely love his brothers out of forgiveness and sincerity himself. It's really good. Uh, my, my, my parents said, so much inequality and ugliness going on right now in the world. God is speaking to all of us through this chapter to not only forgive, but love and be generous in spirit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We can learn that from Joseph for sure. All right. Keep answering that question if you want, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up another question. Do we see in this passage um, a commandment to obey or an example to follow? We kind of touched on it already a bit, but just throw those out there a bit. Are you hearing from the Father? or the Holy Spirit in any way, a commandment to obey or an example to follow in this passage. Um, also, what are you hearing the Father say about himself in this passage? What can we, what can we see about Father God, about God Almighty in this passage? Hi, Janet Lee. So glad to have you back on here. We're in Genesis 43, continuing on. My parents said it's not always easy to do when we feel someone has offended us. Um, that's really good. Yep. And and that's a whole other talk for a whole other day. Um, but I, I would challenge y'all with what my mom just said, to read John chapter 6 sometime and really find out for yourselves whether we can actually be offended or not. When you are in Christ, what does it mean that someone offended you? Um, 
take your family, take your kids, take your neighbors, and do a discovery Bible study on that. John chapter 6, towards the end um, of that chapter, wrestle with that question. All right, so we just asked the question, do we see in this chapter 43 a commandment to obey, an example to follow, or what are you hearing chapter 43 say about the Father? What do you hear Holy Spirit saying? My parents said, God may be showing that even when it appears he is not there, his prophecies are fulfilled. Amen. The, or another way of saying it is the Father's words do not fall void. His words do not fall to the ground void. What God says is going to happen, happens. All right? My, my dad says he sees God wants forgiveness within families. Oh, that's good. Let's just chew on that for a second. If you didn't see that, read what my dad just wrote. That's really good. Dad says he sees God wants forgiveness within families. Wow, that's really good. See, it's interesting that God sees the heart, right? We, we said... We, we discovered in, in chapter 37 that we really felt like Joseph was kind of immature and, and uh, very gifted and definitely followed his calling his whole life, but very in his gifting was immature in some things. And It's really interesting, though, that he chose Joseph. Joseph had a lot of brothers, and for some reason, Joseph was the one that was chosen to walk through the suffering he did for 13 years so that he would be second in command of Pharaoh. It's kind of the same with David, right? And, and yet Samuel, through the Holy Spirit, chooses David, not the other ones. And it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder if in God's mercy, Dad, that him not choosing Simeon or Judah or Reuben or one of these other more savvy or intellectual or strong, brooded older brothers, that maybe they couldn't carry the weight of the responsibility emotionally and spiritually of what would have happened over those 13 years if it had been them instead. What if one of them had been chosen and they chose not to forgive and they wiped out the line of Isaac? They wiped out the line of of Jacob out of unforgiveness. Joseph was chosen for a reason, and so that's really good, Dad. And, and I would encourage us that if you have kids, that what my dad said, that topic would be a great one for one of these Discovery Bible studies and how to disciple your kids. Forgiveness is a key commandment of Christ. So you sit down, you find a passage with a couple verses on forgiveness in context. Let's talk about the process here a little bit. You sit down with the Word of God. You each read it one, at least two or three times. It's read over and over so that the passage sticks. You have someone try to repeat back the passage from memory while others are reading it, right? And then you have someone lead these questions. You hop into these questions and let the Holy Spirit lead people to the answers. You don't guide them. And then as they respond, if it's, if it's from the word you all learn together as the responses of the Holy Spirit in these up, down, right, left questions that we talked about. These four sword questions. And if, and if someone's incorrect in the scripture, you don't correct them. You say, hey, where did you see that in the scripture? What, what verse was that? And you let them read it again and let it self-correct. Oh yeah, it actually said this, not this. Guys, forgiveness would be a great topic for you to, to practice this process. And then who knows, maybe... You're able to disciple the guy at Starbucks in a few weeks because he's a person of peace. Uh, my parents said, so many families are distant and harbor ill feelings. It's true. Yeah, what would have happened without forgiveness? E. Um, what would have happened on the cross, right? I, I think that's one of the most... In one of the studies I'm doing right now, say that today, that... From that passage, you know, that he carried the cross. The joy that was set before him, he carried the cross. Like, 